morning. This morning we are honored and blessed to have with us Pastor Beth Martin. Uh, Pastor Burl has a day vacation today, so we have Pastor Martin to take over. And uh, I think you will enjoy this morning's service. I invite you to stand as you're able for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and old. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah in the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to the witness of St. John, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servants be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice 
came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's good to be with you this morning. I'm Pastor Beth Martini and I serve in our bishop's office as an assistant to Bishop Dunlop, the bishop of the Lower Susquehanna Synod. I bring you greetings on his behalf. The position I serve in is a very particular one. I am a minister of word and sacrament, but I have a number of responsibilities that um, are unique to this position. I accompany call committees and accompanied yours as you were in the process of calling Pastor Bob. I also teach facilitate boundary training, which perhaps you are familiar uh, in other realms of uh, working life. There are different responsibilities uh, for people to take ethics training um, or s different types of um, professional um, boundary, professional ethics training. And our pastors and deacons are expected every few years to take boundary training. It's an opportunity to come together and be thoughtful and consider the boundaries we keep the ministerial ethics we live within so that we um, can appropriately make decisions as we go about our life in the church. As I lead these trainings, one of the questions that we talk about and um, encourage uh, our leaders to think about as they move about their lives, make decisions about what they do and say, is to ask the question, for whose sake? If you're going to um, say something or do something, it's helpful to ask, for whose sake? Who is this serving? For example, if I'm talking to person A about person B, Am I speaking to them for the sake of sharing information about person B so that person A could pray for them because this person has asked for prayers? Or am I saying things to person A about person B so that I can um, show how much information I know so that I can be seen as someone who is in the know? Am I doing it for the sake of gossip so that I, or for the sake of putting down others? For whose sake? It's a question that gets to motive and um, to the purpose behind our speech or action. It's a question that helps us focus on whether the things we are doing are for the sake of others, for the sake of God, or are they more from the things that we confessed during our confession this morning? Are we speaking in ways that silence others? Are we silent when we should speak up? Are we keeping score in our hearts? For whose sake? Throughout the Gospels, Jesus is described as going about teaching and preaching and preparing those who love him for what is to come. Often, that is the cross, and often this news of what is to come 
is either met with resistance from the disciples or often with confusion. In today's reading from John's Gospel, we hear that even the Greeks, so non-Jewish people, are coming to Jesus and wanting to see him. More and more people are hearing about the message that Jesus is preaching. And they are coming to him and Jesus has turned his face toward the cross. Jesus is moving towards his crucifixion. At this point in the gospel reading, Jesus has already come into Jerusalem triumphantly on the donkey as we will all celebrate next Sunday on Palm Sunday. Jesus is moving towards Good Friday and he tells us this parable and it's just a very brief parable but he says if a grain of seed falls into the earth and dies it will bear fruit a seed does not live for itself but its purpose its sake for living is to die so that new life can be born from it Jesus speaks in so many ways to try to get his followers to understand his mission and ministry, his purpose in the world. In talking about what is to come, Jesus talks about the glory of God. And then this voice from on high comes and says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And people are chattering and wondering among themselves, what was this? Was it thunder? Was it an angel? And Jesus stops them and says, this voice has come for your sake and not for mine. When I initially read this gospel reading, I thought this line was not at all the center or the heart of this scripture reading that the focus was on the cross and where Christ was moving towards. But in reading it again, this, th th these three words, for your sake, seems absolutely central to not only Jesus's ministry, but our life as Christians, our motives and intention in the world for us, as we proclaim in the creed, it is for us and for our salvation that Jesus came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried. For us and for our sake. It is for us that Jesus goes to the cross. It is to give glory to God the Father. It is for the sake of the reconciliation of the world that Jesus takes on this humiliation. It is for our forgiveness of sins. Jesus goes to the cross for the sake of the formation of the church. For this community of believers, the body of Christ, where joys are shared and burdens are distributed among us. These are the fruits of that seed that dies. This is for that sake. This year, the ELCA World Hunger Ministry celebrates its 50th anniversary. These, quite literally, are seeds that die and grow into fruit, produce, crops to feed hungry people. ELCA, ELCA World Hunger exists for the sake of a hungry world. Over the past 50 years, $650 million were given and distributed to help encourage feeding projects, locally, nationally, and globally. ELCA World Hunger exists to fight against the root causes of hunger and poverty. 
both nationally and across the globe. Another part of my position, which I have the privilege of relating to, is our Synod's hunger team. We are able to distribute every year a portion of funds, and they go to different feeding ministries across our Synod. I understand that you feed people from this place. We've granted money to buy refrigerators for food banks to store fresh foods. We've granted money to congregations that have cooking classes for children and all sorts of creative ways of engaging with the community and seeking to live for the sake of others to help alleviate hunger among us. So what about you, Redeemer Lutheran Church? I believe you are celebrating about 121 years of ministry, having been formed in 1903. For whose sake do you exist? I believe that you exist for the sake of pro proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ in this time and place in this neighborhood in Lancaster. I believe you exist for the sake of those who have been marginalized historically. According to the vote which you just took, you exist for the sake of those who have been discriminated against based on their identity. You exist for the sake of the gospel in a weary world. And for that, I give thanks to God. So as we go about our lives this day and week, I would invite you to consider, as you make decisions on what you do and what you say, for whose sake? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families or intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving in treatment or ill, especially Linda, Dottie, Lois, Tracy, Jeff, Doug, Bonnie, Barbara, Gail, Cindy, Jada, Dawn, Joyce, Larry, Harvey, and Joyce. Hear us, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Today we pray especially for our siblings in Christ at St. John Lutheran Church in Maytown and their pastor, Reverend Karen Minnick Sadler. Strengthen, uplift, and guide them and their ministry according to your perfect and loving will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Patrick, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. God's peace be with you.
please stand. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God our provider. You have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. One brief announce, I think there's only one brief announcement. Um, about 15, you may be seated if you'd like. Um, about 15 people from Redeemer and several from Reality Church joined together yesterday morning and cleaned out the youth slash Shiloh house next door right here, five feet from this door. Um, carpets were removed, wallpaper, junk treasures, and uh, was about three hours worth of work and then we were provided with a lovely lunch. It was, uh, my muscles were very sore yesterday. <laughs> it was work, but it was very rewarding. It, it really felt good, and to see all that was there, uh, and some things were donated right off the bat. It was just really, really a, a great day. So that, that step has been taken to move forward to turn that into affordable housing units. And um, watch next week for the bulletin to see everything that's going on for Holy Week. Now receive God's blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is with you. Thank you, God.